three killer baits for lakes and rivers. Hi, my name's Roger Osborne, and in this video, I'm going to teach you three awesome baits that I've used so many times to catch countless fish in lakes and rivers or your local estuary. Make sure that you like and subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let's get started. I've come down this morning to my local lake and really there's heaps of places I could fish this morning around this lake, lots of good vantage points. I'm at a spot here where there's a few weeds along the shore and then it drops off into deep water which is perfect. That's really what you need to be looking for. You want to make sure that your bait's in that deep water. And um, I love the overcast conditions, it keeps the crowds away, it's a very busy time of the year. So um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to catching some nice eating fish this morning. Low light periods are always really good for fishing. That's why early morning, late afternoon, when the sun gets low, the shadows come around. It's a known fact that the fish come out to feed at those times. I know when I've been spear fishing that during the day you don't see many fish, but when you're there early in the morning or just once the sun disappears, it's amazing where the fish come from. So that's why it's great to fish in overcast weather because it just you get that lovely low light period and the fish bite. I was down here a couple of days ago just in the middle of the day on an overcast day and just pulled out so many flathead and brim. It was fantastic, so that's why I've come back down again today. The first killer baits to use in lakes and rivers is the humble pilchard, also known as a sardine or a muley in Western Australia. These are readily available. You can buy them frozen at lots of different places and they're a very good bait. But I'm gonna show you a specific way to prepare this and it's also a very economical way to use. I'm simply going to cut this pilchard into chunks. I'm going to remove its head. Oh, so like that, the ground's a bit soft. And I just want to cut some chunks. I'm going to cut that one through there, that one through there, that one through there. And so we'll grab one of these pieces and put, I'll show you how to put it on. These little chunks of pilchard are a very good bait. You can see here, I've just got a beautiful little piece of pilchard. You simply just pin it through once like that. That's it. You have, the hook, you have the hook through the piece like that. Really, really easy, that's a great bait. So we're gonna whack him out and then we'll get started on one of the other baits. I'm actually using three rods today. I'm gonna to toss two out and then hold one. I'm walking out past the shallows just to make sure that my bait gets out beyond the shallow area into the deep water. And I'm going to whack this in a rod holder. We'll see how long it takes to catch a fish. Just going to whack that there, leave a little bit of slack line just so that the fish um, can pull it out. Awesome. Now we're going to move on to the next bait. The next bait that I'm going to use is the humble yabby or nipper. Now I caught a few of these myself. They're very easy to catch. They don't take a lot of skill. Um, I've actually made a specific video on how to catch yabbies or nippers. So make sure that you check that out because it gives you really clear instructions if you haven't done it before. They're a wonderful bait and they exist in abundance right along the east coast of Australia in the millions and millions and millions and millions. They just can't be exhausted. I believe that you can get them in Western Australia too and also in South Africa. In South Africa they call them pink prawns. So I've got some in a bucket here, which I'll show you. And I'm going to grab one and put him on. Uh, just grab one here. Now these things have nippers. You can see it's nipper. You have to watch the nippers because they can, they can hurt and they can draw blood. Um, you don't have to leave the nipper on, you can just take it off. Um, if you want to, and then, they, then you um, remove the possibility of being bitten. And I think, look, if you're going fishing with your kids, perhaps it's a good way, good idea just to take the nipper off. Um, that way, you know, you can ensure your kids aren't going to uh, <laughs> have a painful bite from a, a yabby. You can see here, I've whacked him on. Beautiful little bait, and I've really got such a simple rig. I have a, a running ball sinker down to a swivel and then a short leader to my bait and actually all three rods that I'm using today 
is exactly the same rig. So now I'm going to toss this guy out. I haven't been watching my other bait actually, but I'm going to whack this guy out and then we'll get the other one. I, th I know I've had a bite already actually on my other line because I left a nice bit of slack on that other rod and the line is out taut. There may even be a fish on it. So once again, I'm going to walk out because there's no point in tossing your bait and landing in shallow water like this. You need to be getting out the back. So I'm walking out a little bit to ensure that my bait gets beyond the weeds. Now I know I'm in really good water out there. You know, I may have a fish on that other line. I'm just going to hold this for a second because very often you get bites quite quickly. Now wherever you go fishing in a lake or a river, you want to make sure that your bait is landing in the zone where fish are going to be. You don't want to be tossing out and landing in amongst weeds or shallow water. You want to be out getting past the weeds and into the deeper water. If your bait lands in the weeds, fish may find it through scent, but very often it gets hidden in the weeds. And the fish tend to patrol that area beyond the drop off anyway. So I think I might just check that other line before we look at our third bait because um, something's grabbed it and pulled it. Whether it's still on it or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, the line is quite straight. I'm hoping there's something there. There may not be, but... No, nothing there, but how... I had that piece of uh, pilchard on here. It's probably gone. Yeah, I definitely had a bite. You can see I've got no bait left. My hook is empty, so I'm going to put another piece of pilchard on. Just going to grab one. The beauty of using baits like this is you get three or four baits out of one pilchard, which makes it extremely economical. You could literally go fishing for only, with only four or five little pilchards for bait and catch dinner. That little bit of pilchard, oh, I've got one. So I only really just chucked that pilchard out and it got na nailed straight away. <clears throat> now this is not a big fish. Often you catch small fish like this and you get the big ones in between the little ones. This is a baby snapper. And you can see it's beautiful. It's got amazing colours. So I'm just going to let this little guy go and then reload with another piece of uh, pilchard. I think I might hold this one this time because I got a bite so quickly. <clears throat> I haven't had a chance to put my third bait out yet because I'm getting bites and I can tell I've had a bite on that other uh, rod with the nipper or the yabby on it. I've had two casts with that little little chunk of pilchard. First one got the bait, bait got taken while I wasn't watching. Second one I got a bite pretty quickly. I went fishing recently using exactly the same baits. I had some nippers and also little chunks of pilchard. Caught a couple of great flathead on the pilchard plus big brim. Also caught flathead and brim on the nippers as well. Now this guy I haven't had a nibble yet so I'm going to put him in the rod holder and we're going to have a look at our next killer bait to round out the three. The next bait that I want to showcase which is an absolute winner is the humble prawn. These are also called shrimp in other parts of the world. These are just a packet of frozen shrimp or frozen prawns that I bought at a lo local shop. I'm just going to tip them out. What I like to do is actually peel the prawn, put on a peel prawn bait because it's a lovely soft bait and it's a, it's a delicious morsel for fish. So I actually um, I peel the skin off a prawn before I put it on the hook. 
So basically I'm just grabbing it from underneath, pulling the skin off, using my nail actually. Just going to peel that skin off the prawn, like so, and just squeeze his tail so that all the flesh comes out and you've got a beautiful, um, beautiful flesh bait. This is a stunning bait for fish, both in rivers and lakes and also off the rocks and really for just about any application. The old prawn is an incredible bait for fish. I've caught mulloway on this bait, so many different species. So I'm going to whack this on and here's my third bait. Also, obviously with this, um, in this video, two of the baits that I'm showcasing, you can just buy so easily and then you'd need to catch the nippers. So it's very simple to put on a peel prawn. You start at the tail end and you just feed it onto the hook like a worm, like so, until it's fully on the hook. And then I like to put a loop back over itself, which is called a half hitch, over the end, pull it tight, and that just holds that bait neatly, holds it neatly on the hook, and it, and it won't just um, all fall down to the end of the hook. It's a really beautiful, neat bait. So yeah, that's a cracking bait. I can't speak more highly of this bait. Now, I know my other rod with the nip has obviously had some bites, the line's out straight on that one as well. <clears throat> so I might actually chuck this prawn out. I think I'll chuck this prawn out and then check my other line. Okay, so I'm going to whack this guy in here. I'm going to check my other line. You know, a peel prawn is also a really aerodynamic bait. You can cast it so well. Very little wind resistance. I'm, I don't have a fish, I'm stuck on the weeds. <laughs> Just got to pull this out of the weeds. Uh, man, that's taut. I'm not bending the rod with this because I don't want to, um... oh, that's it, got it. The rod I'm using is really light, so I wouldn't be trying to get this out of a snag by pulling the rod like that. I, I might damage the fishing rod. And you can see I've got some sort of weird creature, some sort of growth that was on the bottom. I don't know what this is, it looks like some sort of alien. Yeah, it's actually hard. It's like a hard growth. Hmm. Oh well. So I had a yabby on this one, so I'm going to put a new one on. Just chuck that yabby out. And it was only sitting on the bottom for about ten seconds, and I got a hit. This sort of fishing is really good for kids very easy. This one's a little bit bigger but I still don't think it's big enough to eat. They do put up a good fight, especially on light line. Hang on, that rod's getting a bite. Now look at that. Oh, hang on, it's not a bite, it's the ducks. <laughs> the ducks are stuck on the line. It's another little snapper. Look at that rod. That rod is bending. <laughs> I just chucked I just chucked a peel prawn out and it was only in the water for a few seconds. You know, it's a busy time of the year. But um, lots of boats out on the water. I'm hoping this guy feels a little bit bigger. <coughs> Definitely fighting a bit more. Uh, no, it's just got a lot of fight for his size, really. They do pull hard. It's 
It's another little snapper. I'm getting plenty of bites. So far lots of little fish, but there's always big ones in amongst little ones, so... That's okay. I do like to leave a little bit of slack line when I cast it out so that initially when a fish picks up a bait and goes to swim away with it, it feels no resistance. I never just leave the line taut like that. I always leave it a bit slack. And then I know if the line's gone straight that something has actually had a bite at that bait. Now to get my other line back out there, I've been pretty busy. I'm going to check my other line because um, I've been busy with these two lines getting lots of bites. And I want to check this other fella. There's a strange creature coming in. <laughs> Look at this stick fish. We don't really want that stick out in the water. There you go. That's a, a record stick fish. Ouch. It's actually got some spikes on it. I'll leave that on the shore, I think. Okay, I'm just cutting up another pilchard. Here for bait. I've actually had bites on all three baits. Oh, uh, the pilchard, the prawn, and the nippers have all caught small fish. So just enjoying the morning and um, waiting for the big one. I, think I might cast this one to the left a little bit, actually. Just to vary it. <clears throat> Got a little stick in my shoe. I'm wearing water shoes today, mainly because even in lakes and things, there's often sharp things on the bottom like oysters and different shells and so forth. So I'm wearing these water shoes and there's a link to these on my website, rogersfishing.com. I've been wearing these, these shoes for a few years. Um, I'm just gonna take my shoe off because you can have a look and see in my shoe, there's a, there was a shell in my shoe. <laughs> have a look. Those two shells actually. And they were jabbing into my foot. So that was very, very uncomfortable. <clears throat> but the material that these shoes are made of, it, it seems to be a really good quality because they haven't perished at all. I wear them constantly <clears throat> and the rubber is kind of like a nice soft rubber <clears throat> and um, yeah I really like them. Um, I'm going to be wearing them for many years I think, these particular shoes. I don't actually get paid anything to, to promote these shoes, however if you do buy them from my website I get a very small commission. I'm actually just talking about them because I love them, they're amazing. I wear them on the rocks, the beach, wear them everywhere. They're really good. I, I'm sold, personally. <laughs> now, I'm going to check my line. One thing I like to do, I mean, generally speaking, if you haven't had a bite, oh man, I think I've hooked another stick creature. If you haven't had a bite, generally, your bait should still be on your line. Um, sometimes the fish steal your bait really sneakily, and you always want to make sure that you do have a bait on the end of your line so that you can catch a fish. I don't know what I've got this time. A piece of weed or something. It's quite large, whatever it is. Look at it. What have I got? Maybe it's a log or something. Goodness me. Look at this. It's another one of those things like I caught before. It's some sort of weird growth that lives in the lake. Yeah, I don't know what these things are, but uh, it's a living thing. Feels a bit spongy, actually. Okay, so this one was bending over then. People often ask, why do I strike so hard? The thing is, especially with monofilament line, often there's slack, slackness in the line. 
Um, and you want to make sure that you connect. Actually, I don't feel, what have I got? I've got something pretty small, I think. Really small, actually. It's coming in like a speedboat. This one's a small black brim. They call it black brim or yellow fin brim. The small fish have been keeping me very busy. <laughs> Got in a bit of a fin. I wonder if it's a baby one or a one that's bigger than a baby. Okay, so let's just see what's on this one. Is it, an, is it another teenager? Feels a little bit like a teenager, but we'll wait and see. This is on a peel prawn, this one. Yeah, it feels very brimmy. Here he comes. Okay, so it's another snapper. It's slightly bigger, this one. It's um, slightly bigger than those other snapper. Not big enough to eat yet, but I've certainly caught legal size snapper in this lake before. So it's, it's great to see a healthy fishery with lots of small fish in there. I'm just going to let this guy go. Put him in the water here and let him have a little swim. Mm. He's off in a hurry. Okay, so that, that was on the peel prawn. But everything's working, everything's catching fish. The peel prawns, the nippers and the pilchards are all working. It's a very pleasant way to spend some time. It's just a matter of waiting and being patient and you certainly do catch lots of good quality large fish that you can eat in amongst the little ones. But so far, this morning it's just been heaps of small ones. Often when you buy a packet of prawns, they're, I mean, usually they're all different sizes, you get small ones. So I've actually put two prawns on, because they weren't so big. I've peeled two of those little prawns, but you can see it's a great bait. Really, that's a generous bait. So that's an excellent bait. So just double up if the prawns are small, and it's all good. So I'll whack it back out there and... I wasn't watching one of my rods. I heard a very short burst of the drag and it's obviously bent, and I saw the rod flick back and bent over really violently. And when I pulled it in, everything was gone. My whole rig had disappeared. Something had obviously grabbed it really hard and it broke because it's fairly light line. So I'm just re-rigging. I want to show you the hooks that I'm using for the nippers and the prawns. They're actually called a worm hook and I'll get one out of the packet. I really like these hooks actually. Um, they're a worm hook but they have a couple of barbs on them which helps hold the bait on. I um, found them to be really good so these are a staple in my estuary and light beach outfit. These, uh, these hooks are excellent. So I'm just actually making up another rig. I've tied my swivel on. So this is my leader. It's some um, 10 pound fluorocarbon. So now I'm going to put the hook on. Hopefully this time, whatever big thing grabs it, doesn't just break it. <laughs> Man, that was violent. Whatever hit it, hit it really hard. So I've got another fish. This one's on pilchard, uh, one of those little cubes of pilchard bait. It's got a little bit more size in it, this one. Here he comes. Okay. And this guy is big enough to eat this guy. So look at that. That's a lovely lake brim that has taken um, 
one of those chunks of pilchard in amongst all the little brim. So that's good. I love eating brim. They're beautiful, delicate flesh. So this one is going to the dinner table. Awesome. So it's worth waiting in amongst the little fish. You actually catch fish that you can eat, which is great. But we're not finished yet. We still will probably catch some more, which would be awesome. I was fishing just along the shore before. I was getting so many bites, but they're all just really small. So I thought rather than continuing to feed the little fish, I'd just walk a couple of hundred metres along the bank and just try a different aspect. Oftentimes you pick up flathead that way because they just, you're just not quite sure exactly where they are and they might be hanging out one spot more than another. So I'm hopeful fishing here. Uh, it's great looking water like so much of the rest of this lake and um, still got plenty of time to catch a feed. So I've got my pilchards here, which I'm going to cut up. Actually, I'm just going to um, cut that end bit off. Cut some nice little cubes of pilchard. I get four baits out of that one. I've got four lovely baits there. So I'm going to whack one of them on. For these little cubes of pilchard, I'm just using a size 1.0 hook. It's a, it's a size 1.0 octopus. Well, really, it's like a suicide octopus style hook. And um, this, this hook works perfectly with these little cubes of pilchard. Just little, little nuggets of goodness for the fish. So easy just to pin it on. Just put it through like that. Just like a little dog biscuit. <laughs> now whack it out there, out beyond the weeds to where all the yummy fish are. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Just set my drag a little bit light and leave a little bit of slack line there. I'll just grab another rod and I'm going to whack a yabby on this one. So I've actually just got a, that, a worm hook on this rod. It's a different hook to that one because it just suits those little nuggets of pilchards a little bit better. And I've got some nice nippers in here. Whoops. There's one with a big nipper right there. Now, I was really encouraged to find out that they get these in South Africa as well, which is awesome. South Africa is very like Australia, the coastline of South Africa. I've been over there. I've been to Durban and Port Elizabeth and Jeffreys Bay. I haven't been down to Cape Town, but the coast there looks very similar to Australia. All the vegetation is very similar. I wasn't fishing at the time, I was surfing, but I'd love to go fishing over there. Now I can see there's a, a marker buoy out there. They're often good places to fish because they have a chain that holds them to the bottom and lots of weed and stuff grows underneath there and little crabs. So often fish hang around them, so I'm going to cast close to it. Well, hopefully without hitting it. Yeah, just landed beside it. So they often work as a fish attractor. That's what they do out in the deep sea. They put what they call FADs, F-A-D, fish attracting devices to attract fish like dolphin fish and kingfish. Um, it's because the, the FADs that they leave out in the ocean Weed and goodies grows underneath it, which attracts small fish, and the small fish attract big fish. So I've got to keep my eye on these rods. So each of my rods has a different bait. This one has a peel prawn. Now that simple bait's an absolute cracking bait. If you just fish with them, you'd catch good fish. But in this case, I'm giving the fish a bit of a, a selection, and it'll be interesting to see which gets more bites on this particular occasion. There you go. Oops. It's a lot of fun using these little rods. So easy to use and handle and really perfect for kids if you've got kids. So I'm going to actually check my other lines because I think they've had bites while I've been getting ready. So that, um, that first yabby that I chucked out, it didn't last very long. I just grabbed a few yabbies. It really only took me five minutes. You don't need a lot. You can have a look in my bait bucket, see what's in there. So yeah, it really only took me five minutes to catch those. 
super quick and um, where they live that you just get so many of them they just multiply none of these ones have any eggs on them but when they lay eggs they must lay zillions of them I might hold on to it actually and just wait and see if I get a bite so that's had a couple of whacks but it might not be on it or it could be on it it pulled it half hard enough to hook itself. Yeah, something's having a nibble at it. I can tell there was something having a little nibble out here. Oh. No, 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 it doesn't feel like there's any bait or anything left, actually. Hang on. No way. Something had actually taken it and swum in with it. Not very big. What do we got? Just a little baby brim. Oh yeah, look at that. Something's going for it. That's got the prawn on it. It was getting a bite, so that's good. Hmm. Feels like there's something small on here. What is it? Which one? The far one. It's just a little baby snapper. We get, get the hook out gently. When you're lure fishing, today I'm fishing with some natural baits. But when you're lure fishing, you don't keep continually casting in the same spot all the time. If you don't get a hit, you're always working an area. Normally people would say you work the clock. You, cast, you make a cast at 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, so that you cover an area. And you can do the same thing with bait. If you're tossing a bait out continuously in the same spot and not getting any bites, don't do that. Pull it in, cast it out further cast it a bit closer to the shore, cast it to the left, cast it to the right. Just mix it up a little bit if you're not, not getting any bites. That's what I normally do, that's my usual habit. Now yeah, something's taken this pilchard. You can feel it out there, not quite sure. I'm a little bit careful with um, putting too much pressure on fish because I'm using really light line and if a flathead hooks it and swallows it I could be bitten off quite easily. This probably not, you know, isn't a flathead, it's probably a little brim or something but we'll just see what it is. It's stuck in the weeds. Why is it? It's like it's got a stick around it or something. It feels unusually heavy. Yeah, it's just a small brim. Actually, it's another juvenile snapper. They grow to approximately, I think the biggest ones grow to about 20 kilos. I've caught some beautiful ones of these fish, much bigger than that. But um, they love the humble pilchard. I did that the other day and they swim in towards the shore. Turn around and go back out. Ouch! That's better. There's these really weird things in the lake. They look a little bit like conjuvoy, but they're not. I'm going to touch this one and see what happens. <laughs> see, I think it's, it's just, it's, it's top sticking it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh 
What is that? That's bizarre. Look at this. But when I touched it and squeezed it a bit, all, the, all this water started squirting out. Does anyone know what this is? It's definitely not kanji, but... There's more of it, like there's, there's some more over here. I'll pick up another piece. Yeah, look at that. There's two bits of it there. Oop. Very strange. I don't think it's edible. <laughs> I'm actually moving this line because uh, seem to be catching a few small ones again. So I'm going to chuck it out on the windy side um, just to mix it up. Oops, nearly got the reel in the water. Okay, so I'm going to whack this one out here. It's got a peeled prawn on it. I'm going to do a kind of a low profile cast because if I cast it kind of sideways and low it doesn't get affected by the wind so much rather than doing like a, a high a high cast with a high trajectory just around the corner from where I'm fishing there's just so many swans heaps of black swans everywhere it means the waterway is very healthy You know, it's really interesting. We're always learning things with fishing. I mean, I love it. I never get bored. And you don't catch fish. Well, I mean, I, I probably catch a feed of fish 19 times out of 20, and that's no exaggeration. But today, I've got some amazing baits. The baits I'm showing you in this video, which I've caught so many fish recently and over the years that work wonderfully well. But all I've been catching is small fish. And yet, only a week or so ago, I had some friends around and one of their sons loves fishing. So I took him for a fish down by the lake down here. Every single cast, we landed four beautiful flathead and two big brim. Every sim single time we threw our line in the water, we're getting nailed. However, since then, we've had an absolute deluge of rain and the water here at the moment is kind of like a hot chocolate color. So, I've only caught one edible size fish in this session, which for me is a little bit unusual. I haven't had any shortage of bites, but they've all been really small fish. So, you know, you've got to be in it to win it. But I think I'm not quite sure what it is. It might be the amount of fresh water that's in the system. Usually in those times, a lot of the fish which like the fresh um, ocean water and salt water travel down to the entrances of estuaries. So I probably would be better off if I was fishing more towards the ocean rather than up the back of the lake where the fresh water is getting flushed in by the tide. More. Having a little bit more of a go. Yeah, okay, what's going on here? I don't think I've got anything. There was a fair bit of slack in the line actually. Yeah, there's something small. Again, <laughs> another little one. Uh, Barry Brim. Oh well, not big enough. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's, that's bending. Oh, it bent a little bit then. Yeah, I think it's, it's on. Okay, so I still don't think this is very big. It's pulling the rod a bit, which is nice, but I still, I still don't think it's a very big fish. It's pretty small. It just pulled the bait really hard. And this one had a, um, a yabby on it. Feels like another little brim or something. I can feel it, all the little head knocks of all it's coming in. So it's definitely not a flathead, that's for sure. There you go, nice and lively. Another small snapper. Well, on that note, I'm not going to feed the small fish anymore. <laughs> so I'll see you in the next video.